Hello everyone, what you're about to see is a short prediction guide video on teaching you how to predict enemies and always stay two steps ahead. So this is one of the videos in the series that I run exclusively on the Patreon where people send me 15 to 60 second clip and if there's something interesting to be made like into a point, I will create a video response to it and publish it on Patreon. This is just a sneak peek to it. I go through a lot of examples of predictions and how to actually achieve such predictions. It's video i hope you guys learn something new and enjoy today's video is about predictions this has been submitted to me by nix and his question is how do you deal with characters who have infinite dashes we have a lot of dashes how do you predict that so let's first watch the clip what he does and then we try to go over it okay so it's velvet coming in from the river he shoots a q immediately then he does e gets knocked up velvet gets a reset of a dash and kills him and they trade one for one but that's all we know. So we like a little bit of context, like what summoners they have, how they're how they're working. But let's let's talk about a couple of principles of uh, predictions. Predictions you can maximize the value of them if you know exactly how the enemies are going to play. So the way we achieve that is by knowing how the enemy champ plays and what they want to do. So if you've played Velvet and I did because I wanted to learn how to play against her, we know that she has four core dashes. So when we go here in the at the start of the clip, this Q is absolutely terrible. Uh, you're just forcing her to dash forward, which is something she's looking to do anyway. This would have been a desperation play if you precast. So there's two ways. You send it off terrain here. You send the cl you send it off terrain and then you reactivate it here, predicting her dash forward. Because that's kind of like the obvious thing that she, she wants to do, right? Because that's what you're kind of doing with this queue. You're pushing her forward. So you can go for that prediction, but even that one is suboptimal because there's no reason to predict when she has so many dashes she could easily use one of the backwards ones because how velvet works is she's very directional she has four directions okay it goes like this okay this x is where she can go um but this 180 degree line is wherever she can dash utilizing that dash uh, it's a bit complex so it goes into like these four quadrants so this direction dash can go anywhere here right she can use the backwards one to go here and then she still has the two forward ones to go for you uh which is also a very difficult thing to deal with. So ideally, you don't even do anything here and bait with the Jin. So she, she has to dash the gap close. Also, a mistake is going into her because you're offering two different targets. When Velvet has two different targets, she has a lot easier time to maneuver because then she opens up larger space to go for, which is why I often take the approach of baiting onto my AD carry. That's one of the core principles, because that's why we, we play well, because also Jin is kind of full HP, you're not, she can't burst Jin. The idea is to bait her onto Jin, and then you can play against her. So now she uses both forwards dashes, so she has one backwards. And if you're farther away, she can't really use the backwards one to maneuver. But here she can, because she can, she recognizes an opportunity. She goes EW into you, and then she resets her dash, and then she's in kill range. So there were many points of failure here, like the Jin trades a kill, whatever. The key to predictions is knowing what the enemy champion is due. And if they have too many dashes, we don't even attempt to do anything unless we're specifically trying to force them into a play. Irelia or Katarina fall into the same category with a lot of dashes. And in those cases, we generally don't even try to land it unless we're very desperate. And in those desperation cases, we're going to do setups. And setups are mental manipulations, which would be this. Precast into the dash because you're forcing her to dash forward, then you hit her with the Q. And even that's a risky game, you're not that desperate. You don't have to do that. Um, the idea is to play far away from AD carry and then use him as bait. Here's one of the recent clips of how baiting into your AD carry works. So we see Riven coming in, and this is like a challenger Riven player, really good player, but I know how Riven combos work. So she just did the jump over the wall, she, she's going to get E back, and look what I'm doing. I'm not even helping her. Because I know if I show immediately, Riven will just use the next Q that's coming up right now. And she's just going to do, she's just going to go Q, Q, and she's gone, right? But what I'm trying to do is uh, bait her into a committed play. She already did E, which means she lost a bit of safety. And then she's going to go Q, 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 right? So what I'm doing here is I'm manipulating the vision line, which is here. I, I'm staying up, away from it and waiting to punish. So you'll see how the clip progresses. Only when she kind of commits for the QQ, I land my Q, or I uh, hit it predictionary where she has to be if she wants to kill the severe. And she's already committed, 
then we just full combo. So Rimen is a similar character to that. She has infinite dashes, so the only way to, to land it properly from out of vision like that is to have that element of surprise and wait for her to commit. Now, if I was closer, let's say how, how different this play would have been. If I was closer here, if, if I was closer here, like my champion was here, I would offer two different possible dashes. And then it's impossible to predict. She can shuffle aggro. This Riven is fit. She has a shutdown. We are behind as a team. She could shuffle aggro infinitely and kind of work around you, right? So you go here, you try to predict on, on your uh, Severe, she just dashes to you and you get wrecked because you're low HP. Pretty much similar scenario. So that's exactly how it works. Versus these types of champs, predictions are not something that's that's easily done. You have to be very, very smart about it and deliberate. Like there's a... There's deliberate attempt behind every single action. Um, this is a 1v1 prediction. This is just how you pick up an enemy player. So uh, it's about understanding the game situation. So here we know this vein is greeting for a recall because I'm coming off of an offset. I think we died or whatever happened. Uh, so vein is looking to recall, obviously. So will she leave without getting his cannon? No way in hell. She, she just won. She's full HP. Why would she be afraid? So... I predict that she's gonna do because she, she tries to get the standard kiting pattern like hit the minion move step back hit the minion move step back and that's kind of what i'm predicting that she's gonna do because she's trying to space away from me while still getting the cannon to the point of execution and that's exactly what she does but i land the q so what happens then is you'll see here in the 0 0.5 speed i hit the q i land the w knowing she's gonna stick and Look at this last auto attack. She has two stacks on the cannon. Third one's going to execute. And after getting the cannon, I kind of assume that she has to dip out because my teammates are also coming back from the reset. And she wants to make as much distance as, as away from me as possible. And how map curvature works is... Map curvature kind of... It, it's this... It kind of funnels enemies into this vector. Like, if, you're, if they're running away, they're going to run away like the fastest line possible. The fastest line possible to their base is this line. Okay? So I'm kind of predicting that she's going to take the fastest approach to leave. And that's basically this, this prediction. And guess what? Vayne hits the cannon, jumps into that. I land another W because he has no animation cast time. You can just do it before R, then you do R. I do a little bit of nice, not dropping stacks of my ult. Like, it looks a bit cleaner in the, in the full speed, but boom. W, boom, W, R. And then we just track her perfectly. So that's, again, how predictions work. But these predictions, they require a level of, of knowledge what enemies are looking to do. So that's a, that's a time-based prediction. Because you know it has to happen exactly that way. This is a very, very chaotic situation. Where we go into predictions as well. Uh, this is a bit hums. So we pick up that fizz. The only way to die here is to fed Nidalee. And I just deny Nidalee all entry. Because we, we stop bot lane. Their bot lane is not strong. Fizz and Nidalee are the only threats. Okay. I heal my guy for movement speed. I'm positioning. See how I went to right here? To narrow the possibilities. Right? Fizz will never dash here. He's never going to dash on this guy. I went to right so I can angle up better. If I have this angle... Fizz can't do any maneuverings, right? If I, I can't, I can't miss. If like, if I'm at this position and Q forward, he dashes here. If I Q like this on my Draven, he dashes to me, right? There's, there's so many multiple ideas here, which is why, like, um, the standard mantra for Velkas is game knowledge into positioning into skill shots. Skill shots are much easier if you can position better and you can position much better if you know the game. And by understanding the game, I reposition to the right getting the optimal setup, and then when he dashes to my Draven, I just pop the true damage. Here, it's a little bit of a... Like, you can say this is a bit of luck, this prediction, but also it's... it's a, This is like the last moment Nidalee can go in. This is literally the last moment Nidalee can go in. So it's a bit of a, like a instantaneous thing. I don't really like process this in my brain. It's just natural instinct. 
Like, oh, they have Sion hitting us. After this, they have to reset. The Nidalee Q uh, that hit will expire. She doesn't have the long jump anymore. Sion is dead. She's never going to go in 1v3. So she's only going to go in while the Sion is active. So I kind of figure out, okay, she has to go in now. And I land that E, predictor, and then she's dead, right? So that was the only time she could have made this play. If she waits one second longer, she can't make this play. So that's, again, like time-based prediction. And all of this is just playing the game a lot. Knowing the characters, knowing what they're looking to do. Knowing exactly what the enemies are looking to do and uh, manipulating them. So the key concept to learn about landing predictions is narrow the possibilities down by your positioning. By knowing what are the possible outcomes. If there are two squishies in the lane, the possible amount of plays enemy can do is twofold. Because he can go to you or your AD carry. You can manipulate. If you're low, you can pre pre present yourself knowing that you're the only target and bait onto you. Or much, much more consistent and better approach in solo queues, use your AD carry as a bait. AD carries tend to play aggressive. If you hide out of the vision or just slightly space away, like you dangle him on a, on a hook, and they will be bound to go for your AD carry and then you can kind of maneuver from there. And that's why Velka support is very, very potent, because you're operating with a double threat and you both can punish. In regular standard matchup, you have one threat, which is AD carry, support is the setup, AD carry punishes. With Velka's or any mage setup, you have two threat system. You have double threat. If Velka's goes in, dishes out his combo, gets engaged on, AD carry will punish. If AD carry goes in, you're baiting very well, you have the burst, they go for AD carry, you predict them, you punish them. So... A lot of people don't ever utilize the second part because they're used to support engaging. Very often you can take the step back and let your AD carry do the work and then you punish onto him, right? You're just providing him that safety by not even being there. It's a counterintuitive principle, but you're not there, but you're providing him safety because, well, when they go in, you're there to punish. Anyway, that's the short overview of predictions. If you have any more cool clips, send me and I'll try to tie them to basic game principles and make some minor short educational videos. Bye.